Warm welcome to an yet another discussion on gate electronics and communication network related papers. So here we are checking gate 2014 set 2. So moving to the first question, Norton's theorem states that a complex network connected to a load can be replaced with an equivalent impedance, right? So I am drawing Norton's equivalent uh, figure here. Uh, Norton equivalent impedance is this one that is Z Norton similarly this is I Norton right a complex network load this is complex network load it's a direct question to a complex network load right it's in parallel with a current source answer D is the correct option right Norton's current is in parallel with Norton's impedance and similarly, if complex network load is given by R plus Jx, then Z Norton must be R minus Jx. Moving to the next one mark question. In the figure shown, the ideal switch has been open for a long time. If it is closed at t equal to 0, then the magnitude of the current through the 4 kilo ohm resistor at t equal to 0 plus. Right. So the ideal switch has been open for a long time. That means steady state condition is attained. So inductor behaves as a short circuit. Right. If it is closed at t equal to zero, then the magnitude of the current through the four kilo ohm resistor. Right. So at t equal to zero plus, inductor behaves as short circuit. Similarly, capacitor behaves as open circuit. Right. It will continue its steady state condition prior to t equal to 0. That means the circuit turns out to be plus minus 10 volt, right? Now 5 kilo ohm. Now the resistance 4 kilo ohm. The capacitor is open circuited even at t equal to 0 plus. And now a 1 kilo ohm resistor is there and inductor is connected here inductor is shorter to at t equal to 0 this is for a t equal to 0 plus at t equal to 0 the switch is closed switch is an ideal switch to right so there is no time lag for the switch so when switch is closed the current flowing through the resistor right i i is equal to voltage v that is 10 volt divided by resistance 5k plus 4k right 10 divided by 5 plus 4 that is 10 by 9 so answer is 1.11 milli ampere right here you have to think that the 1 kilo ohm resistor is bypassed by this short circuit here you have to remember that the 1 kilo ohm resistor is actually bypassed by this short circuit switch right so there is no 1 kilo ohm resistor during the calculation of current flowing through this 4 kilo right so the answer is 1.11 milliampere so moving to the next question in the h parameter model of the two port network given in the figure shown the value of h22 is right so this is basically interconnection of two two port networks we can check the interconnection suppose if we apply a current the current will split at this point and uh, one part of the current end is this two port network and another portion of the current end is this two port network. So actually the current splits, right? The applied current splits into this two port network and to the this two port network, right? Similarly on the return path, right? On the return path, these currents will join to this direction, right? So actually this two port connection is basically a parallel connection of two two port elements right so parallel connections of two two port elements here we know during a parallel connection of two two port networks we have to evaluate first of all y parameters why because the effective y parameter right the effective y parameter of two two port networks is equal to y11 plus y dash 11 right similarly y12 plus y dash 12 and so and so 
So, in this problem, we can first evaluate the y parameter of this two port network, right? So, I am evaluating the y parameter. At this node, the total admittances that is 1 by 3, 1 divided by 3 plus next again a 1 by 3, right? That is y11. Next, similarly, y similarly next y12 that is the admittance shared between node 1 and node 2 so that is minus 1 by 3 as admittance is 1 by 3 and the current direction is in this way so the current is opposing so minus 1 by 3 similarly for y21 and uh, for y22 is 1 by 3 right 1 by 3 plus again another 1 by 3 so we evaluated the y parameter for the first two port network similarly the y parameter of the second two port network is y dash equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 next sharing one that is minus 1 by 2 here also minus 1 by 2 next 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 that is 1 now we can evaluate the total y parameter of this combination right that is first one 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3. 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 is 2 by 3. 2 by 3 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1. That is 3 by 3. So that is 5 by 3. So first one is 5 by 3. Similarly second one. Minus 1 by 3. Minus 1 by 2. That is 6. Minus 2. Minus 3. That is minus 5 by 6. Right. Minus 5 by 6. Again, here also minus 5 by 6. Now, this value is 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 is 2 by 3 plus that is this thing, right? So, 5 by 3. Now, we have to evaluate S22. So, here we have evaluated Y parameter. So, we have to convert this Y parameter to H parameters. So, in terms of Y parameters, H parameter is defined as 1 by Y11 minus y12 by y11 similarly y21 by y11 and delta y by y11 right so delta is actually determined so delta y equal to 5 by 3 into 5 by 3 minus 5 by 6 the whole square right so that turns out to be 2.0833 right Next y11, delta y by y11, y11 is 5 by 3, right? So, the answer is, that is H22 is 1.24 Siemens, right? 1.24. Moving to the next two mark question, in the figure shown, the capacitor is initially uncharged. Which one of the following expressions describe the current I of t for t greater than 0? Right. So, it is a very direct question too. The capacitor is initially uncharged. That means initial voltage equal to 0. So, we have to draw final steady state condition. Right. Equal and final steady state condition figure. 5 volt. Next resistance. That is 1 kilo ohm. Next 2 kilo ohm. And the capacitor is open circuit. Now, it attains steady state. That means final voltage is, right, final value equal to 5 into 2, 5 into 2 divided by 2 plus 1, that is 3, that is 10 by 3, 10 by 3 volt. Now, now we know the capacitor charging, discharging expression as V final minus V final minus V initial E raised to minus A T. Now, we have to evaluate A, A equal to 1 by time constant, right? So, checking here, we have to actually evaluate the time constant only. So, tau, tau equal to RC. Here it is an RC circuit. Now, R is R equal to 2 parallel 1, right? 2 parallel 1 and C is actually 1 microfarad. So, 2 parallel 1 is 2 by 3, 2 into 1 by 3. Similarly, RC, I am marking it as RC. RC is the time constant. So, RC equal to 2 by 3 into 1, right? So, that is 2 by 3. 2 by 3 equal to 0.666. Unit is milliseconds, right? As resistance is in kilo ohm and capacitor is in microfarad. Checking the option, we have to mark it only as 2 by 3. So, RC is 2 by 3. 
2 by 3 milliseconds that's correct now we can apply this expression so v final is 10 by 3 right 10 by 3 minus again 10 by 3 minus initial value 0 so e raised to minus t by tau right t by tau this is actually the capacitor voltage capacitor voltage is the voltage across this 2 kilo now we have to evaluate the current so the current i of t equal to this voltage capacitor voltage right this voltage capacitor voltage by 2 k that is 5 by 3 into 1 minus e raised to minus t by tau e raised to minus t by tau where tau equal to yeah 2 by 3 milliseconds and so answer is a right Moving to the next question, in the magnetically coupled circuit shown in the figure, 56% of the total flux emanating from one coil links the other coil. Then the value of mutual inductance in Henry is, right? So actually the coefficient of coupling K is given as 56% or 0.56, right? We have to evaluate the value of mutual inductance. here. The individual inductance is given and uh, we have to evaluate mutual inductance. So we know coefficient of coupling K equal to M divided by root of L1, L2. Right. So M equal to K into root of L1, L2. That is coefficient of coupling K equal to 0.56 into root of L1. L1 is 4, L2 is 5. That is equal to 0.56 into root 20. So it is 2.504 Henry. So the answer is 2.504 Henry. Moving to the next two more question. A series LCR circuit is operated at a frequency different from its resonant frequency. The operating frequency is such that the current leads the supply voltage. Right. So current leads the supply voltage. The magnitude of current is half the value at resonant. So I equal to I resonant current by 2. Now if the values of L, C and R are L equal to 1 Henry, C equal to 1 Farad and R equal to 1 Ohm respectively. The operating angular frequency is. Right. So the circuit is basically a series LCR circuit. For a series LCR circuit we know we are taking the independent axis as omega and varying current gives this type of curve, right? At a resonant frequency omega r, current is maximum, right? Similarly, we know the circuit behaves as purely capacity for omega lesser than omega r, right? And similarly, we know the circuit behaves as purely inductive for omega greater than omega r right and it is mentioned in the question as current leads voltage so current leads voltage means the circuit is capacity right that means the circuit is operating at a frequency omega x lesser than omega r right so in the question it is mentioned as at this operating frequency the current is half the value at resonance right we know at the resonant frequency the current is given by v by r right but at this operating frequency the current is half of the value of that at resonance right at the resonant frequency the current is given by v by r so the current value at this operating frequency is v by r divided by 2 that is v by 2r equal to v by z because at resonant frequency it is purely resistive but greater than resonant frequency or lower than resonant frequency the circuit consists of resistive term and similarly inductive or capacity terms right we know the impedance z as z equal to root of r square plus omega l minus 1 by omega c the whole square right but here we obtained z equal to 2r that means z equal to 2 into r equal to 1 so z equal to 2 so i am substituting that value that is 2 square that is 4 equal to r is 1 plus 
again omega l is 1 minus 1 by omega c again c is 1 so 4 equal to 1 plus omega minus 1 by omega the whole square that is 3 plus 2 5 equal to omega square plus 1 by omega square so multiplying both sides by omega square we obtain omega raised to 4 minus 5 omega square plus 1 equal to 0 right now I am substituting x as omega square so that the expression changes to x square minus 2x plus 1 equal to 0. Solving this we obtain x equal to 4.791 or 0.208. So now I am substituting back omega. The result is omega equal to square root of x so square root of 4.791 is 2.18 radians per second or omega equal to square root of 0.208 is 0.45 radians per second right now we have to check which one of this value is actually the operating frequency for that i am using omega r that is the resonant frequency equal to 1 by root lc right substituting it we obtain omega r equal to 1 in the initial part i explained the operating frequency is lesser than or lower than the resonant frequency so as the resonant frequency is 1 radians per second the operating frequency must be 0 0.45 radians per second out of these two values right so the answer turns out to be 0 0.45 radians per second so for more gate tutorials subscribe my channel now i am signing out till we meet again with an another gate paper thank you